Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for tuning in for the next spot on episode. My name is Oksana Senikova. I am Cybersecurity Programmability Adoption Lead at Global Security Organization at Cisco. And today we will be talking about SolarWinds supply chain, chain attack and how SecureX can help you find if your organization is impacted by this attack or not. You see the problem standing on this screen right now. As you probably well know, SolarWinds has announced that it has experienced a highly sophisticated attack on um, December 13th. And uh, what we want to achieve here is we want to investigate this attack as well as maybe any other cyber or malware campaign that might be impacting your environment. And we want to find out if there are any identified targets in our environment. We want to look at um, those historical events uh, from all of the security technologies that are deployed in your environment. And we want to be notified if um, we have found any indi indications of compromise associated with this attack. We think that every Cisco security customer should be able to benefit from this session because you all are entitled to SecureX. And I hope that you will find this case, this use case walkthrough very helpful because we will be using threat response capabilities and SecureX orchestration capabilities here to uh, operationalize threat intelligence and automate alerting when we find out that we have targets in our network. So essentially, this is the use case that we are looking at. First, we fetch uh, indicators of compromise from Talos block. Then we extract these indicators of compromise using Threat Response Inspect API. Uh, we compile them into a single list, and then we check each of them and their status with Threat Response and Reach API to find out if they're clean, malicious, suspicious, or unknown. And then for malicious, suspicious, or unknown IOCs, we are also doing enrichment with our environment, looking for local sightings and targets in our integrated security modules using Threat Response and Reach API again. And then if we find any targets or any um, sightings in our environment, then we send WebEx Teams notification. We also create a case book with the results of this investigation, documenting the findings uh, of this particular exercise. In case there are targets, we also create an incident because that means we are impacted and this is a real security incident. We create it uh, leveraging the APIs again and we send WebEx Teams notification. So that's essentially what is uh, going on in this workflow. So here we are looking at Talos Threat Intelligence block uh, related to SolarWinds supply chain attack. And as you can see, it describes the, fu the full attack itself, the tactics and techniques that are being used, the impact, the response recommendations as well. They're a very interesting read for um, all of our customers. And then towards the end, there are also indicators of compromise. And ideally, you would want to check your environment to see whether you are impacted uh, by this threat or not. So what you can easily do manually yourself while you're reading the blog, uh, if you have your SecureX ribbon plugin for Chrome or Firefox web browser installed, which I strongly recommend you to do, you can use that plugin to fetch observables from this blog post, which will be lever leveraging threat response inspect API. And as you can see, there are 61 observables that has been found on this page. Two of them are clean, 29 malicious, uh, 21 malicious, 29 suspicions, and nine unknown. So unknown would probably be of the biggest importance here because we hope that malicious and suspicious observables are already blocked in our environment if uh, our security technologies are in sync with threat intelligence feeds. And the unknown are probably the ones that might not be blocked in our environment, but we will be looking at all of them. So as you can see, this plugin is also leveraging threat response APIs, and we were able to easily fetch these observables. The next thing what we can do here is to click on investigate and threat response, and that will open threat response for us, and it will start investigation. But this is the manual process and we are not going to look at it right now. What we want to do is we want to automate it and we want to use um, available tools like SecureX APIs as well as orchestration capabilities to fully automate this process because this is an ongoing campaign and some of the IOCs might change. Um, you want to make sure you 
not only run this investigation once, you run it regularly and you want to minimize any possible human involvement in this process. So what we are going to do here is we are going to open orchestration and the workflow that I have created for uh, addressing this use case has is actually a modified workflow that the original version of this workflow was created by our technical marketing engineering team. And uh, what it does, it polls, talas, case books, and it runs the investigation on your environment and it creates a case book for each investigation, regardless of whether the targets has been found or not. It tells you the status for um, each blog post, but it only does it once. As we described in our problem statement, we want to make sure that we run this workflow regularly. And uh, we also want to make sure that the incident is created if targets are found in our environment. And this is why I had to modify this workflow to fit um, the, mo the modified problem statement in our case. Along the way, I also fixed a few bugs and made some improvements, but that's outside of the scope of this demo, so I'm not going to focus on it. So let's look at this workflow. As you can see, this is a pretty sophisticated workflow with a lot of steps and sections. And I kind of described the logic uh, to you already and the flow that we follow. We first fetch the blog post, we clean it, we compile all the found IOC into a single list. Then we check the status of each IOC uh, to understand if it's suspicious, malicious, whether it's uh, interesting to us or not. But we don't work with the clean observables here. We only work with uh, the rest of them, which is uh, malicious, suspicious, or unknown. And then for each, we um, do enrichment with our environment in this block, trying to acquiring through Threat Response API all of the integrated security solutions, uh, whether they have seen it in our local environment. And then after that, we compile the messages that we are going to send. We take the observations, if their targets are found or not. We create a casebook to document it. Since we're going to be running it on schedule, if the casebook already exists, then we update the notes to this casebook with the new information on each run. If it's a first run and casebook does not exist yet for this um, threat uh, investigation, then we create the, the casebook from scratch. Then afterwards, we check if uh, targets have been found during the enrichment process. And if yes, then we create an incident and we uh, send web exposed. And if not, we just send a WebEx message saying, uh, since targets were not found, the incident has not been created. Um, so we are going to run it manually for the purpose of this demo. When you run it, um, you will need to provide the name of the WebEx Teams room that you want to use for your triage alerts. And then we provide the blog post. And as you may see, this can be replicated to any other potential um, malicious campaign go that is going on, right? You can easily reuse this workflow for anything because it just leverages any URL where any IOCs are listed in freeform text. This IOC will be extracted and the rest of the steps are very generalistic regardless of which malware campaign we are looking at. And then you also need to provide your WebEx Teams boat token that will be sending um, your messages. And then we hit run. I already have this workflow running. It will run for a while, I have to tell you, because for this particular case, there are over, there, there's exactly 60 indicators of compromise, and it does take time to do deliberation and en enrichment on each of them. So don't be surprised that for this kind of complex use cases, it might take a little bit of time to run this workflow. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you the previous, the result of the previous run that I did earlier. All of the runs are historically accessible, right? So you can go to each of the runs and check all of the statuses and um, for each of the steps and even for each of the iteration for each specific indicator of compromise and see how it has been processed by this playbook. Right, so as you can see, it has executed successfully. We ran through all the steps at the end because this was the first run and casebook did not exist. We have created the casebook. And then because we also have found target in our environment, we did create an incident and we have sent respective uh, WebEx Teams message to our team space. 
So let's just um, confirm that. If we go back to our SecureX environment and we open up the ribbon and we look at our case books, here is the case book that was created. As you can see the date, it was today on January 20th when I'm recording this um, demo. We do have all of the observables, um, all of the IOCs listed here. Um, which is 60 in total, and we have some notes here. So we have documented the fact that we have been investigating this um, attack in our environment. But also because we found targets in our environment, an incident has been created. So if we hop over to Incident Manager, here's this incident, and we can again see all of the observables, and we can see the timeline and sightings, and we can see that our casebook is linked let me also show you WebEx Teams message that we have received. As you can see, the targets has been found in our environment. And here is additional information. Um, we have found targets in M4 endpoints, meaning we, we have one uh, endpoint that is infected. Some of the malicious files has been found on one of the endpoints in our environment. Let's quickly hop back to this manual investigation that we have uh, originally started at the beginning of this demo. Sure enough, you can see that we it also has shown us the target here. So what you could do from here potentially is uh, you could do some actions, right? Using the private menu, you could isolate this endpoint or uh, move it to triage group, for example, or you could potentially modify this workflow to add additional response actions. This is the beauty of this orchestration tool is that it can be as easy or as complicated as you want it to be. So what would be the next steps? You would ask, um, Cisco has issued a customer advice that would describes the steps and techniques that you need to implement if you find out that you are impacted by this threat. You may be able to automate these um, further steps in this orchestration workflow or in another workflow that would run consequently, would be triggered consequently. There is plenty of uh, space for automation uh, since this tool is very, very powerful. Thank you for tuning in for this demo, and I hope it was informative for you. I will post this workflow to my GitHub and provide the link to that repository in the comments to this video.